are a genie And all I ask for is your smile Each time I rub the lamp La 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 When I am with you I have a giggling teenage crush Then now I'm a, a sultry man Welcome to everyone. Uh, I really appreciate you all taking the time to join us for this afternoon. And in the case of our East Coast comrades and friends and brethren and sisters and brothers and others and mothers and fathers and all that, uh, and it's evening. So uh, thank you all. And um, one of the things I wanted to say is that, um, you know, we're coming together in some really interesting times with various objective conditions, such as uh, the pandemic that has uh, infected millions and uh, taken perhaps over 190,000 lives with the projection to be 300,000 by December. Uh, we're looking at uh, unemployment and immiseration uh, that hasn't been seen since the so-called Great Depression. Uh, and racist, uh, fascist, governmental forces, uh, giving agency to um, thugs on the streets that are you know, murderous thugs that are um, trying to intimidate and take uh, people's lives. And so within all that, 
there's another aspect um, in that this technology is really pretty incredible in that it enables us to be together in ways that hadn't heretofore been visited. Um, and even with the phones, I, I sometimes call the phones slave phones instead of cell phones because people seem to be enslaved by them. But on the other hand, the phones have enabled us to see what really goes on with uh, policing or police terror that is called public safety. Uh, were it not for those phones, we wouldn't know about uh, Eric Garner, we wouldn't know about George, George Floyd, uh, on and on and on. And so, so the technology is a, a blessing at the same time, and it, it is enabling us to connect today. And um, it's kind of interesting for me um, doing this. Uh, I'm doing it for a number of reasons. Um, it's a milestone in terms of my own work as a culture worker. Um, I've had some strange things happening and uh, I won't go into more detail than that at the moment. Uh, also, my mom had a philosophy of making sure people got their flowers while they were able to smell them. And the other thing is I'm hoping that, um, my, you know, my journey or this portion of my journey will serve as inspiration to other culture workers that are coming up. And um, before uh, doing that, I want to acknowledge two skill collaborators in this project. Um, this is not the Wizard of Oz or it's not the Leany Riefenstahl show at the Warhouse, as I call it. Um, and so I won't say pay no attention to the woman behind the curtain. Uh, I want to acknowledge our very skilled and incredibly gifted um, stage manager, Sarah Gasser. She's behind, <laughs> behind the scenes making everything happen. So take a bow, Sarah. And then uh, my left-hand woman here, um, Ziggy Lohenberg is an incredibly gifted artist and uh, cultural worker. When I first met her, she was a painter and they introduced me to the visual arts. Uh, I mean, blew my mind. Uh, her, her whole family, are, she's got a family of uh, painters. Her sister's a really outstanding painter. Her uncle was a painter. I was helping clean out some things in Pennsylvania and run across a letter to her uncle from Frank Sinatra uh, talking about an album cover or something like that. So, so they're, they're a bunch of artists. Uh, and the thing I, I want to say, you know, I think I've been blessed to be able to watch Ziggy do her you know, she's, she, she has a lot of skills. She's a, she studied film. And uh, as I say, she was a painter when I met her. And then uh, I invited her to do a poetry gig some years ago at a premier jazz club here in the Bay Area, which was, you know, I was really taking a risk. And she handled it superbly. And from that point on, uh, I, I have gotten on stages at the Monterey Jazz Festival, um, the Jazz on the Hill here, the Dissident Art Festival in New York, on and on. And the one constant is that I never have to worry about what's going on on my left. It's always going to be solid and coming with it. And it's one thing to say that to people 
but it's another thing for one to actually experience it. So as is the case with, um, the, I remember being part of California Arts Council when we were part of the Arts Council, whenever there was an event, uh, art was always part of it. If there was a conference or whatever the case. And so having said that, I, I want to yeah, show off <laughs> the Zixtras of Lowerberg Ziggy. Uh, she has a, a poem that I happen to like quite a bit. Excuse me, excuse me. I butt in across the room. I don't know the rules here, but I know we were once from the same tribe. Threads from tattered flags pull me towards you, float along the ocean that fools the eye with its expanse. We are salt, we are water, we are sand. Pogroms and raids, marches and parades, a border, a wall. We've seen them all. We stand for migrant justice. So toss ice on the rocks with their kinder transport and roadblocks. Families carry refugee heartache. No rules to follow, no laws to break. Threads from tattered flags, grim tales stuffed in bags, holding your child's hand. We are salt, we are water, we are sand. No rules to follow, no laws to break, for now we woke and won't let go. We are the embrace, and to you, your generations, I am tethered. Somos unidos, ale ein mention. We are salt, we are water, we are sand. We are one. Thank you, Ian. All right. If ever I would leave you, wouldn't be in summer seeing you in summer. I never would go. Your hair streak would sunlight, your dress red as flame, your box with a luster that would go to shame. Her promise to never leave this jagged hole in my soul was just shredded. Goose flesh growls, runs, shouts, swoops, leaps, ad libs are left. Her voice belongs to the universe for other planets to marvel at. I don't want to say her name. Don't want to hear headlines, read scribblers who feel my pain, talking heads who most weekdays rip black flesh from bones. It's not business, it's personal like losing some of my soundtrack when Brother Ray checked out, or my two-week depression when Sass stepped off stage. But if there's a place for us, 
outside plantations, beyond the call and response of bullwhips. If there's a place for us, above gun towers and concertina wire, our Mulraney's, Bessie Smith's Lady Days, Nina's and Aretha's take us there. So I tip my cap and sing praise, not to monarchy propped up on a throne of dried blood, skulls and bone, a rusty chain of fools, I tip my cap singing praise, panther style, to my minister of medicine, servant of the people, darling doctor, feel good, practicing universal health care from spiritual free clinics in her throat. I tip my cap singing praise, Grammys, medals, honorary degrees, halls of fame, streets named Aretha Franklin Way speak for themselves. I tip my cap singing praise medallies and think telling teens don't play that song. Think being a bridge over troubled waters for Flint. Making water weaponizers jump to it, getting the lead out. Think, telling ice kidnappers of children, ain't no way. So, so any case, uh, <laughs> thank you. So starting off with some art, I'd like to um, delve into this conversation. I'm so blessed and honored to have some um, long time friends, some real dear friends from my days at Los Angeles City College. It, it, it's just uh, astounding to uh, connect with them, reconnect with them at this point. Uh, I'd like to introduce them. Um, Valerie Masters number one, and uh, John A. Imani. Uh, these are my two dear friends. And uh, I want to just give you a, uh, a little background on each of them. Uh, I'll start with Valerie. Valerie. Valerie and I went to elementary school together. The school was at that time called 79th Street School. And it's now called McKinley Avenue School in Oakland, Oakland. I mean, excuse me, Los Angeles. And um, then Valerie and I ended up. We we also went to Edison Junior High in LA together. Then we ended up at Los Angeles City College and became really good friends. And we were perhaps four streets away from one another uh, in the in the hood at that point. But um, Valerie was, um, you know, just an incredible <laughs> young woman as I think back on it. I mean, you know, she was always uh, very beautiful. That's one thing, but she was smart. Mm -hmm. And she was, um, <laughs> the thing that uh, struck me was that she was always solid, that she was, I remember her being uh, on the Black Call. And then I remember, uh, you know, she was just willing to do whatever was necessary. That's my recollection of her. And I actually was fortunate enough to ride to school <laughs> with her in the new Volkswagen, you know. And um, then she, she also, we could talk later about, she was, I, I I wouldn't have been able to do any of the things I did really without her assistance. And she, we could talk more about that later. Um, John A. Imani, uh, when I first came on to the campus at Los Angeles City College, um, he was, um, you know, 
I don't know if he had a title in the Black Student Union or not. I don't know what that was. But there are people who don't have titles. They don't need titles. They're just natural, mm -hmm. organic leaders. Workers. And he was one of those types of people that, you know, I was immediately drawn to. And I, I ended up in city as sort of a last minute thing because I, when I left Fremont High School, I left with every letter in the alphabet, you know, A, B, C, D, <laughs> F, you know. And so I had no plans of, of what I was gonna do after graduation. I, I was just kind of lost. And so my neighbor across the street, Donald Mitchell at that time, is now Donald Murphy, said, uh, I'm going on to city and apply. I'm going to, you know, register. Why don't you come with me? So I said, why not? I just went with him and I did the same. So I could only get one class, which was a, a history class, and it was an evening class. And so I would um, go to campus as if I were going to high school at that time. And then my evening, my class started at 3 p.m. <laughs> so I, I didn't realize it at that time, but I was being educated by people like Imani uh, and all the other leaders of the Black Student Union. And he was the name, he, he was the one who gave me the name the people's poet at that time. And we'll talk more in conversation about what that meant to me. And so I am opening the, the what is it, the floor or the ether? Can I just make one kind of clarification? Because you guys know the years really well, but we want to make sure that for posterity and for future people and people that don't know you that well or can't always judge, what the timeline is. It's great if you can mark the time. So what year did you graduate high school, Raymond? Uh, June of 67. Okay. And um, when you went to City College, were um, Imani and Val, were you already there for a while or how we, would you say? I was there from 60, 1968 to 670, 1970. Great. That was a period. Imani? Okay, we're having a little audio with uh, trouble with Imani's audio for right now, but, um, and you went on campus at LA City on, at, in fall of 67, would you say it was? Yeah, fall of 67. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I think I read I met uh, Raymond uh, in the in uh, in the uh, fall of '68, and then uh, uh, then we left from there to the to to the spring of '69. Uh, at that time, the uh, Black Student Union had been had, had been started by a guy who uh, who was um, a legend, uh, Ali Rashidi, and mm. uh, yeah, and he. Uh, he invited me to join him in, in, in the Black Student Union. And I did and stayed there until, until 69, 1969, March and April, we had the, had the student strike, the big student strike to close down. I took off and I worked, worked, worked at LA County DPSS for a year. And then I came back in 1971. I had to sign an agreement not to participate in political activities naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, said, put maybe people pay piece, but sure, I'll sign it. Yeah, what the hell? You know, right? And I became back involved with the Black Student Union again, and they, they, uh, they attempted to kick me out, and I had a trial on campus, banned everything, you know. But let me just tell you about Raymond. Let me just, if you don't mind, if I could just jump to that. Uh, when I met Raymond, yeah. he, well, with the, uh, with the Black Call staff, and I said, man, this dude, he's all here. He's got something on the ball, man. You know, like at that time, there was a, there was a big gap, gap between cultural and political activities. On the one hand, you had the US organization highlighting the, uh, highlighting the, uh, the cultural. And then you had the, on the other hand, you had the Black Panther Party, which highlighted the political. 
Now, I was always closest to the Black Panther Party, but I had friends in us organizations and that sort of thing. You know, but, uh, uh, but I saw Raymond and started hearing him speaking. And I said, wow, man, you know, like, this dude's people's poet. Now, let me explain what the, what the word people means in context. Uh, at various times, you know, like, humanity has been called the masses, now they called the working class. But during that time period, the, uh, the greatest sobriquet was to was to was to was to uh, appeal to 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 our people, with with and and designate them as the people. And we was to, for example, the Black Panther Party's slogan was to serve the people. John Lennon had a song called "The Power to the People." You know, it it was uh, it, it, it it was the part of the, of the legal at that time. I said, man, this dude is the poet, man. He's like he's a poet of of, of our people. So damn. Mm -hmm. It's a people's poet, you know? <laughs> and the name fit and the name stuck, and I'm so proud of him. I am. I'm really happy for him. He, his life turned out wonderful. He's got a wonderful wife, and, uh, uh, and he's got his head straightened up. And we, <laughs> we waited 50, John, I'm going to finish in just one second. We waited 50 years for this time period to come back around. Mm -hmm. It was a revolutionary time during that time period. And now the youngsters have that BLM have taken it back over. And the only thing I can do is tip my hat, donate a, a few dollars, and do whatever I can on the side to, uh, to assist that process. You know, but yeah, but, 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 but the People's Poet, if you know anybody from, the, from that time period, and you mentioned the People's Poet, it's, oh, well, yeah, 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 that's Raymond Nat Turner. You know, <laughs> yes, you know. So it's <laughs> a, a nickname become, became a name. And I'll shut up now. <laughs> well, no, can I? Um, great. Go ahead, Val. Please. Okay. Well, Imani, Imani really hit on a lot of things. It was a time of struggle and uprising and awareness, and um, that's when we had the Black Call, and people were just united, and it was just a just a different thing. And we also um, were able to, I believe, if I'm correct, start the Black Studies uh, curriculum at that time. And that was very important. And we had a lot of people that participated. I loved all those classes. It was also the time of the Black Panther Party uh, was established. And um, the, the, the Black Call and the best, uh, BSU, or the Black Students Unit. And also, it was during that time, I have to laugh when we talk about the time that the, um, the school, the administration building was taken over because I yeah. was one of those that was on the back going, yeah, yeah, because if my mom had seen me, it would have been all over. So, <laughs> but when, that did happen, and it was just a very important time. And it's funny that we have really looped and come back 50 years, and we're still talking about the same injustice. And um, if I can move on to my memories about my brother Ray, I remember you always having a cap on. <laughs> and the brothers, being the uh, being the people's poet, he always had a notebook and a pen in his hand. Always, you did. You always carried it right under your arm. I guess you were always ready to write it down, and that's what you have to do: be ready with those thoughts, right? And I did have the honor of taking his his written paper, his written poems, from paper to typed poems, and I typed them with honor on a manual, not electric, typewriter. <laughs> and I'm very honored to say that I have done that. And um, it's just been, it's this 50 years later, it's just been fabulous and it's just been wonderful. So power to you, brother. Oh, oh sweet. You. We have a question and we have a hand raise. I almost can't believe this. Um, the Black Call was the newspaper, the Black newspaper on campus, is that correct? And what yes. year did it start? 68 or 69? 68. 68, 68. 1968. Yeah. Oh, 68. And the BSU is the Black Student Union. So I'm yes. sure you guys know that. And I see this amazing little note that says Rashidi raised hand. Is Rashidi in the house? The, the man we just were referring to, Ali Rashidi from Canada, is this right? Am I, am, am I, um, if so, uh, Sarah, uh, if you can find him, Sarah Gasser is our stage manager and she could bring him, spotlight him and if he wants to say something. Oh, 
Um, he, first and last man. Oh, out. there he is. That is Rashidi. Oh, my God. That's Rashidi. <laughs> okay. Um, this what? is somebody you all haven't seen in a lot of years. And I'm going to wow. pin your uh, video. Oh, yes. There he is. <laughs> my brother. What? We're working on that. One thing I wanted to say um, about Val and <laughs> those poems, um, it, I had no clue um, how to type. I, I had no idea <laughs> about typing. The, type, the typewriter scared me, you know. I didn't think I could even, would ever, I, I thought I would never learn to type, really. And um, there was a magic when Val typed those poems, you know, that's when they really came to life for me. And uh, that's when I, I really treasured them, you know, because I, I would put them in a binder and that would be the real deal. When, as long as they were handwritten, they didn't really uh, count in that way, you know, but mm -hmm. once they were typed, then, <laughs> We're ready to roll, man. They took on life. <laughs> so I, I, and then I would, yeah, they took on life. You know, you, you breathe life into them. And it was, it was just such a, when I think back on it, I, I just want to take the time to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, well, thank you welcome. again, because um, <laughs> it was, it was just so generous, you know. I mean, yeah. you were already giving me your, a ride to school. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So it's my pleasure. I just and really my appreciate honor. your friendship. My pleasure. My honor. And, and then um, I wanted to say to Imani that um, when, when I um, came to City College, um, you know, I was really lost. I was, um, just coming out of high school. I had no plans about going to school. And uh, so I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't, um, but the thing that I found is that uh, I was in my, I was amongst my tribe, so to speak. Um, I think the first week I was on campus, someone threw a chair through the administration buildings window and um, uh, there were all these rallies at the flagpole and all these you know phenomenal leaders both male and female they you know I remember uh, a woman named China uh, Tawili, China uh, uh, gosh Sonia uh, there were there were a bunch of and and then of course Rashidi was on there and Imani, but Imani was who I was drawn to. And because I had so much slack time, um, my class didn't start until three, you know, I'm there like nine in the morning. And so I would see Imani, he's walking fast down. Come on, go with me to such and such. I'm going to do this. And so I would tail along behind him. And, and so th then I started to find my stride and find where I belong. And once he gave me that name, then it really changed my life in, in a certain way because it seemed as though I, I was uh, given a purpose and a direction, really, if, if that makes any sense to anyone. Definitely. I wanted to ask you, um, I know that the things came together for you. You grew up in a political household and you were mentioning to me when we were talking that in high school, you didn't really have an outlet for the politics. You were involved with sports and on a social level um, and you hadn't, you were writing some stories. You said some creative writing, um, but really there was a, a turning point event in your life and then being at City College was the outlet that you said you wrote and um, spoke a piece. And can you tell us more about that incident? Yeah, well, just to back up a little bit, you talked about the writing in high school. I was, uh, you know, I like to write 
stories, you know, fiction, try, try to write it. Anyway, uh, I look back and I joke about myself uh, that I didn't know how to, I couldn't have stopped a sentence with air brakes, regular brakes, a stop sign, a light. You know, my sentences were just like uh, Wyoming wide, you know. And uh, so interestingly, um, what happened is my best friend at that time was uh, a young man by the name of Thomas Melvin Lewis, or Little Tommy, as they call him. He was he became a Panther. Um, Bunchy Carter was uh, um, hired by my mom to be assistant director at a teen post, a youth center that she ran in South Central Los Angeles. When he once he got out of Soledad, my mom hired him to replace um, a, a wood assumed to be Panther by the name of Ray Masai Hewitt as assistant director. And so uh, Bunchy formed a group at the team post that was called the Radicals. And the Radicals became the nucleus for the Southern California chapter of the Black Panther Party. And uh, Tommy, my best friend at that time, he was one of those that once the team post was subsiding, once it was uh, ebbing, he went with Bunchy and became part of the South Central, the uh, um, Los Angeles, uh, Southern California chapter of the Black Panther Party. And in August of 68, uh, he, along with Robert Lawrence, Steve Bartholomew, and I think there were four of them, they were riding in an area on the west side of LA called Adams and Montclair. And the uh, police yep. uh, set them up and, you know, basically killed three of them, including Tommy, which, who right. was my best friend at that time. And, you know, it was just really um, a, a tremendous blow to me in that um, this is April, I mean, this is uh, August of 68. And if you recall, in April of 68, April 4 of 68, uh, King had been killed, and if I'm not mistaken, Bobby Hutton had been killed in Oakland. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think it was the same year. And so, in any case, um, you know, I was really stricken by that. I was really traumatized, and so I transformed my grief into my first poem. And Wow. Um, then, to take it even a step further, I had the audacity to read the poem at the an area at City College that was called the Breakaway. They had these they used to have these rallies outside, mm -hmm. and I read it. And um, I remember Imani and other people, um, you know, really. I don't know, giving me strokes behind the poem. And, and from that point on, you know, it was, <laughs> it, was on. Yeah, it was on. Yeah, yeah. Because um, when, when Imani talked about uh, everything being in service of the people, that was always the way I looked at my art. It should be in service of the people. That's, you know, it's not about me so much. It's about, you know, what can I do to help add my little 1.25 uh, cents to the struggle. So anyway, long answer. But. So that was a real, a real beginning for you at LA City College. And thank you, Imani and Val and, um, and Rashidi for, for encouraging this man because he really, you know, he kept it going for many years, studied, went into political study for a lot of years and went into performance study and kind of have, has brought those things together. Um, and one thing I wanted to ask, uh, I think it was um, 
Val, you brought up about um, Black Studies, Ethnic Studies on campus, and I'm wondering also, the SF State at the time in 1968 had a big strike that really affected a lot, a lot of campuses, and I'm, I'm curious um, uh, what the influence on LACC was from SF State's oh, strike. I, I don't, can you hear me? Yes, can you can. Oh, okay. I don't recall there being any effect to us because it, I, uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, so um, you think that, uh, okay. And Imani, do you have a recollection of any connection with SF State? There was also Panthers moving up and down the coast, I know, but. Uh, Imani. You might have to unmute. There, 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 there were movements all over. You know, for, for, instance, for instance, well, I mean, in, in Oakland, that was the, uh, uh, what, what was the, the school up there? You know. Oh, was, Merritt College? It was um, yeah, Merritt. Laney, Merritt, Merritt College. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where yeah. And all Huey across, went. And, uh -huh. Yeah, all, all across the United States. That, that, you know, it's kind of like the Black Lives Matter movement right now. The wind was just mm -hmm. popping up in, in all kinds of places. Yeah, we uh, um, we uh, uh, we had many, many, many different inspirations that we could draw on and draw strength from, and in our turn provide them with examples and with strength to see. I would really like to hear from Rashidi if we can all, if, if we can talk some kind of way get him, get him linked up to to be able to speak. I know. Um, I think Sarah said he hasn't been able to respond to her messages, so. Oh. I don't. Can you call him on the phone? Oh yeah, if you have his, if you have his number, can you call him on the phone maybe, um, on your cell phone? And just, well, I do not have his number, but if you send it to me I, in chat, I, I can do it. Okay, or if I could, uh, if Rashidi, if you could type in, um, the chat, what his phone number is, Sarah could call him. Um, and. In the meantime, I was also going to ask, and it, it's... Um, well, one thing I wanted to contribute yeah. to that um, question about the influences. Well, what there, I think um, that shakes out in two different directions. On the one hand, there were formal influences, and then there were less formal uh, influences. Like I, for example, uh, <laughs> got my poetry card, you know, say lifetime membership. Once I saw a poem by Amiri Baraka, I said, I said, what? You could say that in poetry? I said, <laughs> sign me up, you know, and, and it had gotten down to us um, because they had a real strong component of the Black arts movement that was based in San Francisco, as was the case in New York and um, uh, New Orleans and uh, Detroit to some extent. And so that was one of the influences on me directly from there. But then there was also an organization called the Black Student Alliance that, um, Valerie, I don't know if you know Warren Houghton, if you remember Warren Houghton or not, but Warren Houghton, uh, Melvin Williams, Melvin X, uh, and some others were part of that. It was kind of like an umbrella organization, as I understood, for, as for, for all the California Black student unions. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I was the delegate from LACC. There was also Jabali, there was also Didan, Saibu, Lil Joe. Didan, um, that's right. A, bu a bunch of good comrades. Wow. Um, also, one of the newspaper articles that you had, and I have to thank, um, publicly want to acknowledge that German, um, that Imani, John Imani, um, sent all this great documentation. And I was kind of curious if 
you've become an archivist and uh, in some way or a librarian or a documentarian. You but know, you sent this anything that requires organization, believe me. <laughs> I'm the most disorganized. Wonderful. I am the most disorganized organizer that you've ever wanted to run into. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But meanwhile, you sent us um, this am these amazing documents that we, sure. some of them we put in the slideshow and one was from an honoring of Malcolm X mm -hmm. and, and that's where People's Poet is in print because you refer to Raymond right. uh, Turner doing uh, as People's Poet. And um, I just was wondering if there's more of a, a recall of that uh, event particularly or um, anybody? Everything, See, we're talking 51 years ago now. Years ago. <laughs> 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 well, well, there's something I, I wanted to sh The mind is... Um, I'm really... <laughs> I'm really eager to get um, Rashidi on because he has the, you know, kind of overview of the Black Student Union, which, as I say, you know, I was just coming into... It was in full form by the time I got there, it seemed to me. Um, but one thing I want to share with you, something that um, no one really knows. Um, one, one thing, um, you know, I mentioned the death of Tommy Lewis, who was my best friend at that time. You know, we uh, spent a couple of summers to running together at my mom's teen post. And um, <laughs> then, Bunchy was, um, I met Bunchy, I think in 66, maybe uh, uh, fall of 66, I'm guessing. And he, he was like an older brother to me and my younger brother. Uh, as I say, my mom hired him straight out of Soledad and my mom thought of him as a son. Uh, when he was arrested and about to be violated, his parole was going to be violated. She put her house on the line for his bail. And if he had wow. skipped out, you know, we would have been ass out. But um, when, when he was uh, assassinated on the campus of UCLA, along with John Jerome Huggins, uh, January 17th of 1969, that was one of the darkest days of my life, you know, uh, because like I said, you know, he was like an older brother to myself and my younger brother and even to my sister. Uh, he, uh, so subsequent to that, there was a reading, uh, there was an event, a cultural event or a political cultural event. I don't recall what the... Um, building was this uh, center where they used to have performances and uh, art exhibits and all that. It was right across from the breakaway. And so in any case, I was on the program and uh, I had written this poem that was very critical of the US organization. And I was talking about uh, armor plated Volkswagens and bulletproof boobas <laughs> and all that. And because they used to wear these things that were called uh, gown, that were called boobas. And boobas. then they all drove these Volkswagens. Yeah. And so I, you know, really didn't think I was going to make it out of there alive, you know. But at the lectern, under the lectern, on the shelf on the lectern, I had a 45 automatic coat <laughs> pistol that was cocked with one round in the chamber. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, my thing was like, okay, um, they, I might not make it out, but some other people are not gonna make it out. And it was, as I think about it now, I, you know, those 45s are hard to control with that recoil and everything. But I, you know, I was determined that after Bunchy, his death and John Huggins' death, and Ronald Freeman had been shot by mm -hmm. them. Ronald that Freeman, huh? you know, 
that, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to say what I want to say. And, and that's part of this section about the penalties of poetry. I was willing to take that risk, you know, so. Did you have any reactions um, after that, that you can remember that where people did, you know, was there, did it provoke discussion or, or more fighting or more disruption or more, negotiations or I don't I don't recall you know I miraculously I got out of there unscathed because the 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 room was lined with you know bald-headed men with green boobas on standing with their <laughs> arms folded and probably armed and yes. somehow miraculously I got out of there got home <laughs> wow. so I don't you know I don't know what kind of impact it had and to this day I wonder how I got out of there because it was pretty pointed and I don't I don't know if it went over people's heads I don't think it did but you know who knows do you do you want to I mean you clarified it a little bit but did you want to sort of clar clarify that Imani's portrayal of it is that it at least on LACC, it wasn't as as a divi as divided as I kind of grew up hearing from you, kind of at the the demarcation line, and maybe define a little bit the politics orientation difference between the BPP and us. Well, um, what what I know is um, what one has to understand is that uh, Ronald Everett also known as Ron Karanga, his brother by the name of Cheston Everett, who taught at Edison Junior High School, was my English teacher. And he was, he was a great teacher. He taught, he really um, inspired a love in literature and language with, for me. He had a great stentorian voice and, you know, he read classics to us and all that kind of stuff. And um, Everett, Ron, Ron Karanga came to my mom's teen post in his first iteration in 1965 after the Watts Rebellion, the first Watts, Re uh, the first LA Rebellion. Um, and he was teaching Swahili there. And his orientation was cultural and um, with Swahili, uh, practicing African traditions and that kind of thing. Whereas the Panthers came up first here in Oakland, California, with the express purpose of armed self-defense against racist police terror, which we see to this very day. And so there's two very different orientations and the um, both groups were armed both groups uh, were combative and but one group seemed to attack black people critical of its positions whereas the other in, in my experience uh, stood for self-defense and, and defense against police uh, terror. And, and one thing I will say, um, having been on the East Coast for the last, you know, almost 10 years, uh, I'm always sickened when it comes to December, you know, because on the radio, um, there's this talk about uh, the principles of Kwanzaa, which uh, this thing, it's like a menorah. It's, it's, it's really kind of ripped off from Jewish tradition and the seven principles of Kwanzaa and people were celebrating uh, this, which is fine. That, that's fine. If it uplifts people, that's okay with me. But Karanga, 
is running around the East Coast and people either don't know or they know and they're complicit and, and no one's discussing the crimes, you know, like we're talking about UCLA, uh, not only UCLA, but um, Gail Davis was like an older sister to me. And she was one of the women who was subjected to torture by them. So I'm just being real. <laughs> okay. I don't know where we go from here on that exactly. If somebody else wants, has some experience back then um, with uh, sharing some of these threads or how it played out or how, how did it, in, in, for instance, on the Black Call newspaper, did, were, were voices given of different trends that were going on within the Black student population there? I don't remember there being any. Mm -mm. And um, Imani was, um, do you, in terms of the orientation of the paper, what would you, how would you kind of qualify or describe it? Almost all of the black student Oh, it's low. Am I low? Can you repeat what you were saying? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was saying that uh, I, I don't remember there being um, any type of uh, any type of of, uh, of uh, um, split in, in, at at the black uh, call, nor even in the BSU. Abdullah, who uh, succeeded Rashidi as chairman, uh, his brother was was uh, uh, was Karinga's bodyguard. Omar was his name, mm. and uh, um, mm. you know, yeah, the stuff was happening all over LA City, all over LA City between the Panthers and the US organization. Mm. And as I said before, I'm come down firmly on the Panther side, but at City College, we had very few problems like that. The, simply put, the union was wow. too strong. Wow. Yeah, the union was too strong. Yeah, it's true. That, now, it, it, yeah, and you have to remember, as Raymond said, it was in January of 69 that the uh, assassination of, of, uh, of Bunchy and John Huggins took place at UCLA. Well, mm -hmm. in March of 69, we put on a strike at, city, at LA City College with the Black Student Union leading, the United Mexican American students being right there on the front line with us, Vietnam veterans against the war, SDS, uh, black black Muslims, um, uh, j just right about every 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 type of ideology that you could find, found a place in the Black Student Union at, at LA City College, mm -hmm. and uh, again, you know, like uh, uh, I have have I have always had very little use for the US organization, but my interest at, at LA City College was a strong Black Student Union, and. And uh, uh, that doesn't mean that we forgot about what was going on in the rest of the city, quite, quite the opposite. But we tried to uh, keep as united a front as possible. And I think that we did a successful job with that. Yes. Wow, that's quite a feat. That's wonderful. Someone had asked that's earlier amazing. what was the Black Call, and the Black Call was the Black newspaper that we got through, through struggle. And the Mexicans got the uh, El Machete. Uh, through struggle, so so some some of the things that that we accomplished there were not only the black studies, and not only getting black faculty and black administrators there, but also to to have, to, well, I would say community control over these newspapers, you know, because we're completely totally independent of of editorial uh, uh, discretion, as opposed to uh, uh, as opposed to being controlled by them, we controlled ourselves. And the yeah, right. paper, you know, uh, re revealed that. And, and I've got to give a, 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 a tip of the hat out to a guy by the name of Ronnie Rodriguez, who's, who, uh, he was a photographer for the Black Call. He's the one who saved those newspapers, who sent those papers to me, and uh, I copied them. And now they're at the Southern California Library, along with the rest of my papers that, that, that are down there. You know, but but I, I was able to scan them, and then that, that that's the manner in which I was able to send it out to you. 
Now, Ronnie Rodriguez okay. says, I'm sorry. Yeah, just one quick story about Ronnie, please. Ronnie had just gotten out of Marine Corps. Sure. And uh, his mother and my mother grew up in Mobile, Alabama together, and they were great friends. Now, his father mm. was a Cape Verdean, uh, uh, and so that's why his name is, his name is actually Rodriguez, but it's, you know, but, you know, the spelling would lead you to think there's Rodriguez. So he went to the Black Student Union table, and he said, I want to join up. And the sister at the table said, no, 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 brother, you need Umas down the street, <laughs> you know, like, you know. <laughs> <to the, laughs> <laughs> I have to tell Ronnie about this. You know, we're still in contact, yeah. good contact. <laughs> I, I, I did put nice. in a call to- Where are the- or I did put in a call to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to, 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 uh, to Rash, uh, Rashid, but he did not pick up the phone. Now I had turned off my phone, mm. and so I might have missed it, but we'll see. Ho he may be using his phone for this, actually, so maybe he didn't see the call. Um, it, and where can you repeat where your papers are again? Because I thought maybe I could put them, uh, put that up in the chat, so people who want to do some research or in the future. It's, they're 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 at the uh, Southern California Library for Social Science on on Western Avenue. Now, again, I, I, I will tell you that, as I, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm the most disorganized organizer you ever want to meet in your life. And my papers are such that everything is thrown together, you know, like with the, uh, so happy hunting. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm going to, I'm trying to get it. Uh, Southern California Library. Social science. Yeah, it's, 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 it, it was started Social by I mean, this party. And I, I think that they still have Communist Party affiliation, you know. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, Starco. Oops. Southern California Library of Social Science, uh, Batil Lowenberg just put up there. Southern California Library of Social Science. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, that was my, C my sister, yeah. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll send the address or whatever to uh, uh, to Raymond via email. Okay, okay. great. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Wow. Rashid, raise your hand if you can hear me. Okay, I'm not getting any type of response. Will, will he know if you point to him or something? Or? It's interesting I'm, that... Um, yeah, I don't know. I, he's That's visually on, but I'm not sure he's hearing us. Yeah. It's okay. Just but it's he just, knows this is taking place, so that's important. Yeah, but I, I, I don't see any type of response or any change whatsoever. You know, so I'm assuming that that's just a, uh, a, a, a relic of when he had, Oh, that maybe he's, it froze and he Yes, can't, and it froze, okay. yes. Yes, perhaps I that's see. what's going on. Mm. And it's okay. too bad because again, you know, like, okay. as, as I told Raymond yesterday, I said, you know, like, the, 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 uh, he was the first person and the last person that I, I looked up to. Oh, sweet. I hope you get that, Rashidi. I don't know. I know he may um, not be able to have a good signal, but we can find, we'll find another way. We'll find, we'll, We'll get him involved again if we can connect yeah. another call with you guys, maybe Imani and Rashidi, and I don't know how you want to do it, but we'll try to work that out. One thing, um, do you I, want I was just curious about um, what, what you guys were majoring in when you were there, Val, what were you, what were you, what were you majoring in? Well, I majored in occupational therapy. Occupational therapy, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Occupational therapy and black studies. Okay. My major in high school was math science, but when I got to oh. a city college, yes, yeah, when I got to city college, uh, uh, I, I knew that I needed to learn political politics and political economy. And so I changed my major for, um, to, uh, uh, to political science and economics. Wow. And then where did you, where did that take you in your lives? Well, in occupational therapy. I worked 40 years in with the rehab uh, for um, medical equipment and therapy in occupational therapy for 40 years and retired. 
So it took me a long way. (laughs) Yeah. Congratulations. Were you at all affiliated with um, um, Drew Medical School or 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 King Hospital? No. No, I worked with, um, did training at UCI, at uh, UCLA, and also the um, Veterans Association. And then I went to private um, medical equipment companies, Ah. dealing with uh, custom wheelchairs and funding for all that. So totally different from what I started out with, but always had a love for Black studies. And here I am. Uh, (laughs) And how about you, Imani? Uh, When I left uh, uh, LA City College for the second time, I I went directly to UCLA. And uh, uh, it was at that time that I began my, my, my long career as being a long radical, long revolutionary. <laughs> because when I got uh, to UCLA, the Black Student Union was involved in the biggest project at that time was trying to get cheerleaders for the football team. I said, man, wait a minute, man, you know, we're supposed to be making because <laughs> I got to do with <laughs> Black cheerleaders. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I, I, I know what you guys are talking about, you know, so, so that's, you know, there's been, a, you know, ever since then I've been an independent revolutionary, and I've attached myself to several different causes, and and I believe me, I have kept busy for these past 50 years before I, uh, health problems forced my retirement from the movement three approximately three years ago. But my uh, the last portion of, of of my career, I spent eight and a half years uh, uh, working with the uh, uh, migrants uh, who we organized a food program serve the people, like the Black Panther Party free breakfast program for kids, you know. Mm-hmm. It was a serve the people program that we, we rescued food and we, uh, um, we had distributed free of charge in MacArthur Park. And what was so interesting about that was that this took place after, after 2007 when the police beat up the uh, uh, migrant protesters. You know, my, da- my granddaughter is seven years old at the time and I was there. And so we formed a, an organization after meeting in my bedroom for for, for about two, two, two months, I'm sorry, of 13 communists and, uh, uh, and ma- mainly anarchists. I was, I was the only anarcho-communist there, you know, be, you know, until people found out what it was, you know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and what, what was remarkable about it was that 11 of, of, the, uh, of the radicals dropped out, but they were replaced by people from the neighborhood. <laughs> and, and and the people in the neighborhood and to this to this day that program's still going on go to MacArthur oh, wow. park any sunday at right around 12 o'clock southeastern corner of wilshire and fit and parkview and you'll see my comrades there yeah wonderful matter of yeah. fact hold on a second let me show you something <laughs> one thing i wanted to ask um Jeez. is did either of you know no Karen Bass by any chance? Um, I worked with Karen Bass re- uh, briefly. My husband and I did the Los Angeles Blues Festival for a couple of years. Uh-huh. And we worked with her as a community uh, coordinator. So it, it's really something to see how far she's gone. Right. Uh, yes, she, she, she was, was working a in the dear community. friend of mine. Is she? Uh, she was, yeah, she was a dear friend of mine. Uh, in our in our twenties, we w- worked at a uh, agency called the Greater Los Angeles Community Action Agency, or GLACA, that was based downtown. And uh, she was the one that introduced me to internationalism on a grand scale. She took me to the farm workers, and uh, was also uh, recruiting me for the Vincent Ramos Brigade to go to Cuba. You know. Oh wow! But it, yeah. But anyway, Imani was about to. You have something to show us. Can you see that? Oh, okay, yeah. That's myself and some of my comrades at my birthday party. Oh yeah, I see you. Yeah. Now they're they're uh, oh, uh, in, in order: Guatemalan, uh, Honduran, Guatemalan, Black, moi, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at, at another Guatemalan. Oh, and then then that's up in the right hand corner. That's Rene. He's 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 Mexican. So uh-huh. those those were my comrades. Uh, those are my comrades. 
Yeah. And again, you know, I, again, the most important thing was was that when, when you cannot tell the difference between the revolutionary and the people, you got something going. <laughs> right. Because it is the people. Yeah. That's a feat. So that is some organizing there. Definitely. Um, so we have a question from the, the chat room and um, people want to know a little bit about more about your um, poetry history in, in college and how that fed you um, at being at LACC and how that led to maybe even your performance poetry. You were doing it for um, groups of people and then later you did it, um, you did something, you opened for Baldwin, but that wasn't at LACC mm -hmm. anymore, I know. But um, do you wanna just talk about, you talked a little bit about your reception that was on from there, but did you, how did you deepen your practice there? Well, one, one thing that happened is that, um, I mean, this is, this is really, um, <clears throat> before I, I even embark on this little flight, I want to, uh, again, thank Val and Imani for, you know, generously giving their time. And it's been so extraordinary for me because each of you brings something back to the uh, puzzle of recollection. Um, like Imani was talking about um, just the divide between political work and activity and cultural work and activity. And um, so one of, one of the things that happened is um, uh, Imani had an, another brother, I think his brothers were Rol Raleigh and Ron and right. twins, right? Twins, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And so okay. I was confused for a moment, but his brother Ron wrote a play called The Glorious Ghetto. And it was so cool because what he did is he had myself and uh, a Chicano poet, I think by the name of Roberto Guzman, I believe, we would open up each night of the performance. And it was just, you know, so extraordinary to be in the theater and have this wonderful audience. And I mean, the problem with me at that time was not knowing how to get off, you know, it'd be like <laughs> at the Apollo, you need the Sandman to come with the hook and pull, you know, because uh, Ziggy alluded to opening for James Baldwin. I did at uh, LA Southwest College. Um, and the story there is that um, it was on a football field and there's about seven or 8,000 people out there. And I was going and I would go piece after piece and every time I get a response, I'd say, oh, well, maybe more and more. <laughs> and it would you know, when, you know, they say that youth is work wasted on the young. And when I see young people make mistakes, you know, I have to be compassionate because, I mean, I went way over and um, Baldwin w was such a generous individual and such a great man and writer, artist. And he saw this young want to be a writer, would be a writer, trying. And so he was, you know, generous and compassionate. And so uh, that was one story. And <laughs> Do you want to say the second day's story? <laughs> Next day? Or well, day? you know, the thing is, is, it gets worse from there, you know, <laughs> in the sense that um, <laughs> the, the students at Southwest invited me back um, either the next day or a couple of days later. And, you know, this is where I got a little off track. Um, you know, somehow I had something like a little entourage, if you will, which is really, you know, getting off track. And I get there 
And there are about maybe 50 or 60 students waiting in this uh, room, like a cafeteria or something for me. And, uh, you know, I had the audacity to look and say, oh, it's not enough people. And then I said, I'm <laughs> going to do it. <laughs> and and uh, that, you know, I mean, this is embarrassing, but, you know, when you're 18 or 19, you could do mad stuff like that. Now, fast forwarding, uh, having a band, like we have Upsurge NYC, Upsurge here in the Bay Area. And I mean, there have been nights when 50 or 60 people would have been, I would have been going to each table and praising them, kissing their hands and, you know, thanking them and mixing their drinks and so forth. <laughs> so you, but the blessing was that I had a great mother at home and when, and I don't even know, maybe she had even really been there at the uh, Baldwin day. And, but anyway, when I came home and I told her what I did, she just kind of smiled and laughed. She said, baby, if there are 20 people there or 2,000 people, you always give your best. Yes, and, right. and she just left it at that. She didn't, you know, shame me or, or browbeat me or anything. And then that stuck with me and that backed me off with that road I was headed down. You know, I was, you know, and that, that can happen to uh, young people, you know, experiencing success, you know, because it was um, a rapid success, but it was a success that was really based on the people's struggle. It wouldn't have happened otherwise. And so I was getting a little bit sidetracked and um, that um, I could get to the, an, another point that I want to get to. Um, the, the, the thing is, is that when I, I transferred later to um, Cal State LA and I remember I was on the front page of the Cal State paper uh, reading during a Malcolm X celebration and uh, this reporter said something to the effect of uh, a self-styled people's poet uh, <laughs> opened up or, and had this to say or something like that. And uh, I was like, I was pissed off. You know, I was furious. I said, you know, you should check with Imani and the other people <laughs> at LACC. I'm not self-styled anything. But that's, that's, again, that's a function of being young. It's, you know, A, as long as they got your name spelled right, B, you're <laughs> on the happy. front page of yeah, the Cal State of LA paper and then see it's a celebration of Malcolm X, you know, so, uh, you know, but then, you know, being young like that, you can get, get it twisted, get it a little mixed up. And so that was uh, the thing that was going on. It was this constant struggle to, you know, work on the craft and learn the craft and get better and be of more service to the masses of our people. Maybe it's time for another piece. Well, one thing uh, I want to just say this. Uh, I, 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 I mentioned earlier about that event at LACC where uh, <laughs> the, the Panthers used to call uh, Karanga's group uh, Karanga Tangs. <laughs> I, I thought it was... <laughs> I thought it was just wild. But anyway, these guys were around. I got out of that situation. As I mentioned to you, I had my um, 45 under there, 45 automatic. And um, so that was um, a really challenging thing because, uh, you know, unlike cops, you know, who lie and say, I feared for my safety. I really did fear <laughs> for my safety in that situation. But I, you know, miraculously, I got out of there. So fast forward, um, there, there's another situation in which, you know, there's a penalty 
for poetry, uh, we go to 2008 and um, our group here is called Upsurge, the Jazz Poetry Ensemble. And we were celebrating our 20th anniversary at a place called Freight and Salvage in Berkeley. And so I had gotten together some friends and artists. I see one of the artists who was present uh, at that celebration, uh, a wonderful vibra harpist by the name of Yancey Taylor. Uh, and so we had a rehearsal for that event over at a church here called First Congregational Church of Oakland. And during the rehearsal, there is one piece, we went through the rehearsal and I had one piece that I wanted to do with just the basses. And when I went through it, I could tell that the people who were in our band and who and also the guest artists were really not with me on that. And I had a certain level of fear going into this event. And, but nevertheless, I felt it had to be said, it had to be done once again. And so I took that risk. And so I'm gonna ask our wonderful stage managers, uh, Sarah Glaze, Sarah Gasser in this time, if she could roll this um, video. Carved in marble, etched in granite, same cloth, this tapestry, nicknames notwithstanding, their names are Legion. The father of his country, the sage of Monticello, the great emancipator, the great communicator, the trust buster, old hickory, old rough and ready, Mr. Missouri, Bubba, the little magician, Slick Willie, Tricky Dick, Dougie, Lynch and Baines, Johnson, I like best until Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Rosa said so Martin could stand, so the state machine could run, well oil with bloody precision around the planet. Jesus Christ came back forgiving thieves and murderers, escaping Calvary with gold and Pontius Pilate's helicopter and old Sadie's wheelchair. turning tables in the temple and throwing money changes out with trillions of dollars. Came back teaching men to fish for tar, multiplying like loaves. <laughs> Jesus Christ came back crowned prince of peace, though he bore billions for shepherds beating swords into stock shares. Came with his eye on the sparrow and hand on the drone while sending Christian soldiers spreading the gospel of empire, ensuring that the meek shall inherit the earth of mass graves he so piously blesses. Jesus Christ came back blowing smoke about clean coal and newts while hurling his green czar under greyhound wheels and recycling disciples from regimes past. Since arising folk miss all ties except those of pirates and terrorists that fish and farm when left alone. Jesus Christ came back with a jump shot crossover and slipped behind the back ball handling skills for bitch slapping black caucus liberal labor apostles who stood on ice crying freeze-dry tears on his warhead, and singing obscene songs about bombs bursting in air and rockets red glare, while he taunted and tamed them in tongues, tear down your expectations, for there are no Negroes, youngsters, or old fools too big to fail. Now get out there and get my money. Jesus Christ came back as a professor impersonating Iceberg Slim. Though his flock swore they'd hold his feet to the fire. Is that why his combat boots have lipstick on them? join us in a second here and uh, he can tell you it was not an easy period doing that piece in the Bay Area anyway and I'm sure in other places too but um, it was a difficult time then to be critical of um, something that we also were some of us were celebrating um, for certain reasons but Raymond will, if anything, will stick with what his beliefs are through everything. So. Yeah, that was that was a that was a very tough period. I I felt uh, really just isolated here, um, and then I connected with Black Agenda Report and became a poet in residence with them, and then I had my outlet and my tribe again, and then. Uh, to the East Coast, uh, New York, and where there was uh, a lot more space to deal with uh, whatever I needed to deal with. Uh, the uh, Black Agenda Report was particularly uh, struggling against what it calls the Black misleadership class, in which I just call the Black bourgeoisie, that whose interests 
are diverge from the masses of black working class people who uh, want education for their children, want decent housing, and definitely want health care and the uh, and, and come out from under the criminal justice system, whereas the black bourgeoisie are looking for contracts, subcontracts, and uh, dis liquor distributorships and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's so that was a, a really challenging thing for me, you know. But I'm I'm uh, <laughs> it's so I, I've been vindicated because. Uh, Imani talks about the uh, Mexicans and immigrants and the immigrants, uh, particularly from Central America, had a name. I call the fellow in question of that poem, the drone ranger, the immigrants called him the deporter in chief, deported over two million, uh, was one of the uh, most difficult uh, presidents as far as uh, whistleblowers go and on and on. And the black wealth that was lost under that uh, were, was really incredible and it has not been recovered. It's not coming back anytime soon. Um, one thing I wanted to do uh, is I wanted to actually take the time to read a piece because one of the things um, I see going on during the pandemic was the absurdity, the, the, the madness of armed men going to state capitals and forcing their way in, which is absurd when you look at it. You know, armed men going to Lansing, going to uh, Richmond and other places. Um, I mean, to demand that the, the government's quote unquote do, open up. Yeah, to open demand up that, the yeah. During the and, pandemic. Do, okay. Yeah, and that phenomena kind of, in a way, has served to normalize armed people walking around uh, at voting sites, at protest, you know, the First Amendment rights being exercised to protest, to, uh, you know, exercise freedom of speech and so forth. And you have armed people uh, coming out, attempting to intimidate people and out also murdering people, assassinating people. So, and, and I think that that was set up by something, I, this piece I call it 1% funded rally actors. And I'm arguing that the 1%, the rich, the ruling elite, fund these rally actors to carry out their Michigas. Reopen America as colonial Settler thugs opened her oceans of blood, rivers of tears, calling on rally actors, calling on rally actors for side wars, for encores, from gun stores, oh, hardcores, gun toting rally actors who ride or die, Black Panther Party types need not apply. Liberate Michigan, liberate Minnesota, liberate Virginia. Boots on the ground, bone spurred by boss tweet who believes Lee pumped out at Appomattox and bodies litter in Gettysburg were a, a Chinese hoax. Calling all rally actors, calling all rally actors for side wars, for Encores from gun stores. Oh, hardcores. Gun toting rally actors who ride or die. Black Panther Party types need not apply. Liberate Michigan. Liberate
liberate Minnesota, liberate Virginia. Signature strike, shock in all assemblies and senates. Bill Black sites in St. Paul, bases in Lansing, move the warhouse, capitalist heel and white Supreme Court to Commonwealth Richmond. Employ enhanced interrogation techniques, waterboard all unappreciative governors. Call in all rally actors, call in all rally actors for side wars, for encores, from gun stores, oh, hardcores, gun toting rally actors who ride or die. Black Panther Party types need not apply. Liberate Michigan, liberate Minnesota, liberate Virginia, calling for a few good men who think solidarity sucks. The business of America is business and profit over people is as good as it gets. Calling for a few good men who love the rich, the right to work as nail salon, barbershop, tattoo parlor partisans, infected fighter stuntmen as Confederate flag waving extras, fox box high value targets in harm's way, collateral damage, lusting fossil fuel money, flowing like fracking fluid. Call it all rally actors, call it all rally actors for side wars, for encores, from gun stores, oh hardcores, gun toting rally actors who ride or die. Black Panther Party types need not apply. Liberate Michigan, liberate Minnesota, liberate Virginia, call it all AstroTurf Tea Party players. Charlottesville veterans preferred to play Rosa Parks. Hmm. Wow. So, um, in any case, uh, well, uh, before we end the program today, I just wanted to call on our two guests again. Um, and first see if they wanted to share anything else about anything that this may have brought up being part of this or any of their current thoughts on the scene. And um, after that, um, I just briefly wanted to say if there is, we do have some artists, uh, uh, actually the, the participants are quite, um, how should I say, quite esteemed in their artistic practices and political practices and bringing them together or, or bringing their community, political and artistic practices together. So I'd love to, if somebody else um, also wants to join after we give Val and Imani a chance to um, speak. Well, um, I just wanna say I, I really enjoy participating Conjuring up memories from 50 years has been really amazing. You, you, you forget what you forgot. <laughs> I like, well, I'm, can I have that one? Yeah, you can have that one. You forget what <laughs> you forgot. And I, I'm just honored to be here and I'm honored to have been a part of your amazing career. So keep on training, my brother. And thank you for letting me be a participant. There's no way to follow that. You know, so she she sums it up quite well, and everything that she said about you, brother man. You know, like I, I'll, I'll voice my choice and second that emotion. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and, and power, power to the people. That's right. right. right power on. to the people, power right on. That's right. Um. So we, I, I know that we have um, Kathleen and Jose. Um, I don't know if they, I know Kathleen's a filmmaker, Jose's a poet. Um, I have my dear sister Batya, who's a painter and a community artist, live painter. Um, 
I know Sharon Siskin has been doing uh, political art for many years and we've even been invited to speak at her class and she's also been a professor and we've spoken at her uh, class and we'll do again in the fall here. Um, she's involved with environmental justice and, um, and art practices as well uh, and other things, social justice work. Um, anybody else want to say anything? You're welcome to, before we end. Uh, Yancy Taylor is there. Uh, Yancy's mentioned earlier. a great musician. I want to say thank you for inviting me. And I'm always being supportive. And it's always good to hear the history. <laughs> All right, Yancy. Thank you. Thank, thank you, for you Yancy. He's a beautiful musician. You get a chance to hear him. Live is the best in these days. I don't know how you do that. What are you, what, Yancy? What are you doing for performances these days? Uh, just practicing and and supporting everybody else's zooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're getting a much needed break a little bit. You're one of the hardest working in, in the resident in the in the area. I know you were always driving this way, that way up north. So you're getting yeah. to be at home a little bit. It's a break. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay. Um, Kathleen and Jose, do you want to share, Kathleen, about your um, film? We recently saw your film profiled. Do you want to talk a little bit about that or point of attack? Uh, you have to unmute if you're muted, perhaps. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I don't, my voice. <clears throat> I am. Um, I recently had a couple of screenings and Zoom conferences of Profile, which is pretty, uh, you know, it's almost four years old now. And unfortunately, it's still relevant. I mean, it really ended with, um, you know, the, with Ferguson and um, the, the growth of the uh, Black Lives Matter movement. And so, you know, for that, it's, it, it's practically just a repeat of Today is practically a repeat of those last few years when the film was being made. So that, so um, I think there are some very interesting people in it who had, it, who had a, their own analysis of the situation of, of um, what we have to do to, uh, you know, to overcome the racist society that we live in. I think it's, it, it's, it's still a, a useful film. And, that's cool. And I and I know that Profiled is distributed by Women Make Movies. Women, yeah, um, Women Make Movies are the, the distributors. Yeah, and they're they're, they're very um, yeah. And it's 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 in I think eighty what's colleges and um, community organizations, so that it it is being seen by younger people, you know, people who you know this history in it that probably a lot of people don't don't know, and it has um. It has a 25 page study guide with it, which is also, I think, a good, a good thing for people. You know, if your knowledge of um, where you, why you are in the situation you're in is only what happened to you yesterday. It's very good to know. I mean, to, to me this evening, I, did, I wasn't here in, the, in 68, I was in Paris, and that's a whole other story. But, you know, for me, <laughs> ah. Yeah, and you know, the working class shut down Paris, France, for, I don't know whether you all know that, there was nothing, nothing went in, nothing went out, no, but no people were, in, were occupying factories, they were not on this, you know, they were not uh, working. So uh, that was as all that you, you were telling me, about, you know, what you were talking about earlier, was really interesting, you know, for, I knew some, I knew some of the history and, um, you know, they, the, it was so funny about what Katanga and that whole, you know, I, I just had a little understanding of that. So it was very, very, for me, very, um, you know, it was good to, to hear what you all had to say. And of course, your uh, work is just stunning. And every time I read something in Black Agenda, I think, no, he's done it again. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so that's me. Um, can I just put in that um, Black Agenda Report is Raymond is the poet in residence and Black Agenda Report 
uh, dot com. Mm -hmm. um, and they're uh, um, on an online and they also have a radio spot. Um, so there's a way to check out his work regularly there. But Jose, can you share um, you're a poet that I, I know you as a radical poet, part of our radical poets group. And well, um, you also went to the border last year. Um, no, no, uh, 2019. 19. Wow, it's been, 19. wow. Wow. Yeah, it was a long oh. time ago, yes. Wow. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, oh. I, yes. Okay. December of 2019. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the, the end of 2018, beginning, yeah, exactly. Yes. I guess it was January yeah. when you did a report back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can you... Can you share a little bit about your poetry and how you came and um, well, what you were doing? Well, mainly, so mainly, uh, I'm from El Salvador and the poems that I, um, I write reflects what's happened back in the 70s where the um, insurrection was taking place in El Salvador where the um, many of the organizations who were against um, the um, rulers at that time um, fought against uh, the United States uh, imperialism in El Salvador and also uh, the bourgeoisie of El Salvador. So, um, so that's the, the, essentially what I do, right? They, they reflect on all of uh, what happened there. And now that I'm living here in, in the United States, I, I get to write um, some of the reflection that I feel when I hear about the caravan, or even those people who went across the border and perished die in the mm -hmm. desert because I have two poems mm -hmm. that you, I'm sure you have seen them um, Sigi, uh, you helped me out with both yes. of them yes mm -hmm. so so I, I that's that's essentially what I what I do re reflection on all of those times but um, I want to uh, essentially thanks to uh, the five of you for bringing up these kind of events because uh, it is a tool in which I have learned something that is new for me, new and fresh, now knowing your history, Raymond. And since uh, you call me Mr. Rosa, uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so uh, since you call me that, uh, I, I, I get a pleasure to hear from you and, and enjoy your poetry. Thank you so much to all of you. Can oh, I, man. It's great to see you, Jose. You know, what Jose didn't sure. say was when, when, you know, you were all fighting here. Jose was, in, was a student at the university, which was open sometimes, and which was, you know, occupied with, by the army other times. And Jose was really a, in the revolutionary movement in, in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just uh -huh. writing poems about it. Yeah, that helped wow. me out to right. feel uh, the fear. That I'm sure you felt when you have to handle that call 45, right? Wow, oh boy. <laughs> so you know a little bit about that. Yeah. We have to find a, a, a way to talk offline and more about yeah. our, yeah. our yeah. experiences. Yes, yeah. thank you for uh, the thank you. And thank you guys, uh, and thank you. Um, you guys are just such a wonderful pair, um, just uh, revolutionary to the bone. And uh, <laughs> Kathleen, I'm a big admirer of your filmmaking, not only profile, but you did a film, speaking of education, uh, you did a film on Afghanistan, I believe. Yeah. If yeah. yeah. And I learned so much about Afghanistan. I was just, and, and I, it helped my, understanding uh, about what the war is really, really about, and also yeah. the role of women in Afghanistan. So yeah. thank and you so much for your work. And it had a revolutionary movement, which is very, I think it, I think it has to be shown again now, you know, really, mm. because you know, they, they're hoping to do a deal. Right? Wow, With wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I wanted to call on, um, 
Bacha Lowenberg and then Sharon Siskin. Bacha, would you like to share a little bit about your um, community project work and your painting and your art? How do you see your art in this context? Bacha is my sister, <laughs> my big sister. <laughs> oh, she's here. Yeah. Yes. And she's doing great comments in the chat, by the way. I'm putting her a little on the spot, but I think she's okay with it. She has her video on. I'm an introvert and a kosher ham, so probably like <laughs> Raymond is. <laughs> um, well, let's see. I, you know, this has been a very, very intense time for all of us. And what I've been encouraged by, at least where I am in South Florida, and connected with arts organizations all over, is there's been sort of a real sense and cry of people's souls for the arts and for artists, at, you know, also as healers and as contributors to um, our society, especially right now. And I've also seen the young people be very creative and I've been, um, you know, and merging the cultural with the political. I've been, um, right now I've been following and encouraging some black artist friends of mine and sending them opportunities and kudos just on top of the way I usually do. And, um, you know, I'll just do a shout out to one uh, friend of mine, Jason Florent has been doing these amazing animations of, um, of historical figures in American history, black figures in American history. And he's getting into more and more um, film festivals. And he does it with just a very um, deep confidence and artistic flair and openness to others. And, um, you know, you can look for his name. So, you know, I think what I wanna say is that, that artists play a big role and we're, you know, we're not always acknowledged um, in society for what we do, and we usually struggle financially, uh, but we keep going. <laughs> and, um, you know, if there are people out there with means or just generous hearts to support artists, and particularly Black artists right now, um, and, you know, if you'd like to contribute to, to Raymond and Ziggy, and Raymond has a PayPal button, floating around somewhere, I think in the email even. I love that, vote for me and vote for my art. And, um, <laughs> you know, we, we keep going no matter what. We're sort of, I would say we're, you know, we're, we're a special section of, of working class people. We are cultural workers, as I think Val had said that word. And, um, you know, I'm also very touched that Black artists are getting a lot of recognition right now, and um, and even their their prices in the, the art market are going up, and they're getting shows. And you know, hallelujah, it's about time. And um, just real high quality artists, and and also the young people are being so creative. So, you know, I'm just moved and touched by that, and. You know, it's like you want to save everyone and help everyone, but it's like, okay, God, tell me what part I can play. You know, yeah. is, is it with a, a studio mate, you know, or is it with a, an artist friend or what you can do, you know, what I can do. So we each have our own little assignment in that and also to support each other. And, um, you know, let's see if there's anything I want to say about my own work. I mean, I, I said a lot right now. Um, I'm just really grateful. I'm grateful that I can be an artist and I feel like I'm reemerging now in my, my later years and freer than, uh, than ever. And, um, you know, I would say that my, my abstract work is a mashup yeah. of, of high and low culture, whatever that means is just like being real and accessible to people. And also I have a goal of, um, I'll be doing a large live event, God willing, in, um, in a few months in West Palm Beach, I was invited to do it, is to bring the idea of abstract art and painting to make it accessible to more people because people have this thing 
you know, because of what our society has done is like, oh, art is not for me, or I don't understand art, or I don't right. understand abstract art. And so, you know, part of, I feel like my call calling as of late is, you know, if you enjoy music, if you enjoy jazz, if you enjoy classical music, if you enjoy instrumental music, that's abstract. That's all that abstract is, you know, let it wash over you, enter into it. And, and I also find that given just regular people a chance, people are naturally creative. It's just that some people were squelched more. You know, I mean, I had a student once, an adult student that said, her teacher held up a painting of hers and said, this is not what to do. This is what not to do, class. Can you imagine that shame that a young person would have? And I remember in kindergarten, I was punished for talking during drawing, talking during our, our drawing time. <laughs> you know, I'm like, come on, folks. So um, I think everyone's naturally creative and so, you know, I have this mini little thing of bringing abstract art so that it's accessible to people and people can enjoy it as a refreshing meditation, as playfulness, as learning about composition, as, you know, enjoying it just like music and, you know, jazz still has a way to go for people to, you know, and classical music to enjoy. So I'm talking a lot, but uh, that, that's some of the stuff that's on my heart right now. And thank you for letting me talk too. So God bless you both. God bless you all. Thanks. Wow. Looks like, thank you, Bacha. You have uh, Val is also saying that she's an abstract artist. So that's amazing. You can chat with each other. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to ask, that's great, Val. Um, Sharon, can you share a little bit? Sharon Siskin, um, you're on mute, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I should know that. I've been doing Zoom calls with students for a long time. I should know. Thank you um, for everything today. Um, moved by um, the history um, of all of all of everyone who was involved in this call. The history is amazing. Sorry, I've been making pesto. There's um, food all over me. Um, <laughs> we watched you. We watched you, Sharon. It was very cool. The been cooking been show on the side. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'll mute. I'm just really excited to bring uh, Ziggy and Raymond to our classroom um, this semester. Um, Zoom has made it possible for us, uh, Andre and I, to bring artists um, from who don't necessarily even live in the Bay Area. Um, so it's taught me that, that even if you guys go back to New York, I can keep inviting you. <laughs> there's, there's a way to bring you to our class. I'm excited about that. That's funny. Um, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm feeling too overwhelmed to say any more than that, but thank you for today. It was um, wonderful. I feel filled up. Oh, sweet. I just want to um, just recall how one of the, well, I met Sharon in a food context, working in a collective <laughs> restaurant, um, actually even before that too, but that's really where we got, we got to know each other. And then, um, we, you were starting to get grants to work with people with HIV and um, and working in the communities. And that's really one of the blossomings of your work that I remember. And through the California Arts Council, you were a major catalyst for Raymond to be able to secure some money for being an artist. And it was like, it just, um, I just saw how it really raised his um, level of being able to you know, in this, the way the society works is that in order to be able to be a full-time artist, um, to get paid for it is extraordinary. And at that time, California Arts Council was in really good shape. This was pre um, Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. And yeah. um, anyway, Raymond, it really changed our lives together as a couple. It changed his life professionally. And so I just want to Remind. It was great, and I could see you at the at the uh, conferences and a film. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. great to have you with us. Well, um, yeah, but, the the thing thing uh, I'm I'm like I'm deeply indebted and grateful, forever grateful to Val Valerie for with the typing and the rides and everything, and then fast forward, Sharon. Um, you know, it was just, I didn't know anything about these grants, you know, and 
One of the things I want to say is that um, I, I, you know, the alliance between African Americans and Jews is something that goes way, way, way back. And it's at times had its bumps in the roads and so forth. But what I learned um, is that people that look like me were working with the California Arts Council, getting grants. They never told me. It was this Jewish girl from Philly that um, walked me through, held my hand, you know, when I uh, didn't think I could do it. I was like, oh, I can't do it, I can't. And the first year I tried, I fell on my face, you know, because I didn't get it done. I didn't, and then so she held my hand the next year and as Ziggy pointed out, it was life changing, life affirming, because I'm the only artist in the history of the California Arts Council that went to two artist conferences. The state is so big, they held, hold one in Northern California, typically San Francisco, San Francisco in the Bay Area, and then they hold another in LA. I went to both of them because my mom lived in LA I was the first to get there and I was just burst into tears when I saw the food, the, the layout and all that, you know, so it was life changing. And I, so I do thank Sharon Siskin. Well, it for, was, I would just want to say it's a pleasure and, you know, artists should do that for each other, you know, it, and um, yeah. So there's that. And I just wanted to say thank you for talking about the history of uh, um, alliance and, and troubled stuff between Jews and, and, um, and Black folks. And um, I'm very proud of the ad that was in the New York Times, uh, I think it was yesterday, in the Washington version of the New York Times. It was, um, yeah, it, um, it's uh, an alliance of 600 Jewish progressive organizations that took out a full page ad that says Black Lives Matter. And the statement was beautiful. And I, I read about it in on the medium. The medium um, had a, um, like had the actual ad because I get the New York Times and it wasn't in my, it wasn't in my California version of it, you know, but it, it was in the Washington DC version. It, I, I recommend that everybody read it. I, the statement that the groups put together was beautiful. And one of the groups that I'm on the board of, a JICA, Jewish Youth for Community Action, a, a youth-led uh, activist organization um, was on the list. So the youth um, decided to be part of that, which yes. I thought was fabulous, yeah. Anyway, I, I'm, I thank you. I'm gonna not talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon, can we uh, have a plate now? <laughs> <laughs> He's hungry. It's very good. <laughs> it, it, you know, what's better than fresh basil and garlic and some olive oil? It's just good. <laughs> okay, thank you all. I think we're going to um, close out. And Raymond has something to share to, to take us out. A thief, a thug, clown in the rug, a tweet, DC, a lie, a cheat, embellish, embroider, a lying disorder, a myth, a fable, a bit unstable, flim flam, clap trap, bunkum, bull crap. An empty wagon, a puffed up dragon, a whopper, a fib, you peep from your crib, a sham, a fake, a major mistake, pathological lying, false flag flying, a grope, a trope, bad jokes, breast strokes, a grope of a crotch, another man not, where did he bot, over water and scotch, a trumped up story, Cock and bull glory, a foot in the <laughs> mouth for strategy south. Pie in the sky, a bare face lie, a pig in disguise, fooling some eyes, playing fast and loose with Jim Jones juice, a masquerade, a Nazi parade, fake great nation, same plan, 
temptation, a bug in the hall, a fly on the wall, a great big whale, an ongoing tail, a parade in July, another big lie, a wink of an eye, enough I'll cry. <laughs> A clown in a rug, a tweet, DC, a lie, a cheat. Time for feet in the street, sustaining street heat. Bravo! Bravo! <laughs> Thank you all, and Thank thanks you. again to Thank Sarah. You. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for being a, a part of this, uh, helping us do all the tech. And if you can remember to pull the recording, of course, and save the chat file, I'll try to save it as well. Um, there's some good meaty stuff in there and good references. And um, thank you everybody for being here. We really, we really treasure, treasure you. And I also see, oh wow, Laura Castro's there. Another radical poet friend. Um, hi, Laura in Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn in the house, too. She's um, a neighbor. Oh, wow. That's right. Yes. And wow. They connected. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. We love you all. We'll see you love again. You. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's great to see everybody, actually. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we have to leave. When I'm called home, I will bring a book that tells of strange and funny turns and of the heart it took to keep on Never was my own A world of haunted memories Of other worlds unknown I'll tell them of the trouble here When they call I will sing a song and tell them of a beggar's life where 